Did you know that God's grace won't last forever? Let me ask you a question. Who in the Bible is the one that spoke the most about judgment? Jesus did. But when people hear about Jesus nowadays, all they hear about is love, 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 love. And yes, God is love. But do you know what love also does? Love says the truth. And the Bible says that God's grace won't be here on earth forever. The Bible says if you hear his voice today, do not harden your heart as in the day of testing. Do you know what that means? When God brought his people out of Egypt from their slavery, he was taking them to the promised land. But the Bible says that the people were hardening their hearts against God and they were always speaking against the Lord and they didn't surrender their hearts to God. And you know what happened? Everyone who was 20 years and older died in the desert. No one who was 20 years or older went into the promised land. The only ones who went into the promised land that were 20 years and older was Joshua and Caleb because the Bible says that they had a different spirit. They had a different heart. You know why? Because they didn't harden their hearts to God. They humbled themselves to the Lord. But everyone else, people that Jesus delivered out of Egypt, they hardened their hearts towards God. People who were going towards the promised land, they hardened their hearts towards God. And what happened? They didn't reach the promised land. They died in the wilderness. Don't be a Christian that hardens their heart towards God. Don't be a Christian that rejects the conviction of the Holy Spirit. Don't be a Christian that rejects the grace of God and misuses the grace of God and does not respect the grace of God. Don't be a Christian that ends up like the people who were rescued from Egypt and died in the wilderness. Don't be like that. God's grace won't last forever. Look what the scripture says here. It's talking about Noah when he entered the ark. Look who shut the door. Look who closed the door on Noah's ark. Verse 16, and those that entered male and female of all flesh went in as God had commanded him and the Lord shut him in. Who's the one that closed the door on Noah's ark? God. And when the flood came, people were rushing the ark, but it was too late. God had already shut the door and the Bible says that the door that God shuts, no man can open. And the door that God opens, no man can shut. In that scripture, it's used for grace. In other words, man, God can do things in your life that nobody else can come against. That's true. But at the same time, just like Esau, when he rejected his birthright, the Bible says that he came back later to his father asking for a birthright. And he was asking with tears. And the Bible tells us not to be like wicked Esau, who was sexually immoral and sold his birthright for a plate of beans. And the Bible says that later on, when he came seeking a birthright, even with tears in his eyes, it was too late. There was no more birthright for him. So yes, God's grace can move any mountain. But don't reject the grace of God. If you receive the grace of God, God can do unimaginable things in your life. He can change you, transform you, deliver you. But on the other side, when a person rejects the grace of God and that door is shut, it's never going to be open again. The Bible says it's appointed for a person to die once and then the judgment. There's no more repentance after death. And there's no more repentance once the Lord, once the Lord comes to this earth to begin to judge the earth. There's no more repentance after that either. Today is the day of salvation, the Bible says. Don't reject the open door. Don't reject Jesus Christ. Stop taking advantage of his grace. You're not perfect. I know that. You're not flawless. I know that. But there's a difference between somebody who's fighting the good fight and running the good race and somebody who falls and somebody who stumbles but then gets back up and says, Lord, forgive me, and someone who repents. There's a big difference between a person like that and a person who's just totally, completely rejecting the grace of God, doesn't listen to the Holy Spirit, doesn't repent of their sins, thinks that they got all the free time in the world to come to repentance, thinks that they got tomorrow, thinks that they got next week, they can put it off for next month, they can get serious with God in one year from now. There's a big difference between someone who thinks like that and somebody who's just struggling or fighting or running the good race. There's a big difference. Why? Because a person who's fighting the good fight and running the good race and might fail and might stumble but stands up and repent, God will be with that person every single day. But a person who is taking advantage of the grace of God and ignores the Holy Spirit and is rejecting the open door, God's grace might not always be there for that person. It might not always be there for that person. Why? 
because the Lord might return. And second, because we don't know when the day of our departure is. We don't know when the day of our departure is. Right now, I'm young, but I don't know how many years I have to live. Only the Lord knows. So what do I have to do today? I have to surrender my life to God today. I have to do what the Bible says, live each day one day at a time. In other words, not to depend on next month, depend on today. Today, I need to be right with the Lord. Am I going to be perfect today? Of course not. Am I going to be just exemplary? Of course not. But I'm going to surrender my heart to God today. I'm going to walk through the open door of the ark, which is Jesus Christ and what he did for you on the cross. I'm going to walk through that open door today. Because once the flood came and people were trying to enter the ark, it was too late. Noah had preached for more than 100 years. It took him more than 100 years to build the ark and nobody tried to help him. Nobody tried to enter the ark. Nobody said, Noah, let me get in on this. I don't want to be judged either. Nobody did that. But when the flood came, God said, nope, there's no more time of grace. And the Bible says that God shut the door. Not a man. God shut the door. And look what else scripture tells us. Scripture is telling us not to think that God is just taking a long time. The reason that God's grace is here on earth is because he's waiting for us to repent. Look what the Bible says. 2 Peter chapter 3. Verse 8 and 13, from verse 1 and 7, he's talking about the judgment day, that it will come. But from verse 8 to 13, he's telling us why God is taking a time. He's taking a time, not his time, but he's taking a certain amount of time for the judgment to come because he's waiting, he's waiting, he's waiting for more people to come through the open door because he knows that there's somebody right there, right outside the door, and he's saying, come on, come on, enter the open door, receive my son Jesus, don't reject this grace, stop refuting what I'm trying to do in your life, enter the door, God is waiting for you to enter the door. Let's read. But do not overlook this fact, beloved. That with the Lord, one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years is as one day. The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise, as some count slowness. He's not taking his time. He hasn't forgot. But look at the reason that he hasn't judged this earth yet. But is patient toward you, not wishing that any should perish. The reason that God hasn't brought judgment to this earth yet is because he's being patient. Not wanting anyone to perish. He's waiting. He's not slow. He's not forgetful. He's actually full of love and he's waiting. But love has to tell you the truth. Love has to say, look, I'm waiting right now. I'm waiting right now and I want you to repent right now, but I'm not going to wait forever. Love says the truth. And the truth is that he's being patient. Not wishing that anyone should perish, but that awe. Oh, should reach repentance. Man, God's heart. God's heart is for people to reach repentance. A turning away of their sin. A turning to God. That's his heart. But that all should reach repentance. But look what it keeps saying. But that day, the day of the Lord, will come like a thief. He's saying right now, he's showing patience. But it is coming. Believe that it is coming. It will come like a thief and the heavens will pass away with a roar. And the heavenly bodies will be burned up and dissolved. And the earth and the works that are done on it will be exposed. In other words, the fragileness of this world will be exposed by God's judgment. Right now, people are so arrogant, so prideful, so confident in money, so confident in possessions, so confident in health. But on that day, on the day of the judgment of the Lord, the fragileness of humanity is going to be exposed. Be founded on Jesus. Found your life on Jesus. Establish it on the Lord so that when he returns, we won't have to face this judgment. It says this, since all these things are thus to be dissolved, what sort of people ought you to be in lives of holiness and godliness? He's saying, since we know this, that the Lord is returning, what type of life should you live in the meanwhile? He says, live a life of holiness and godliness. What does that mean? An exclusive life for the Lord. It doesn't mean you're going to be perfect. It means that you're going to live for the Lord. You're going to live for God. Waiting for that day, hastening the coming of the day of the Lord, because of which the heavens will be set on fire and dissolved, and the heavenly bodies will melt as they burn. But according to his promise, we are waiting for a new heavens 
and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. In the days of Noah, the ark was shut with God's hand. God shut the door on Noah's ark. God shut it himself. In our modern days, who's going to shut the door of salvation? God is also. Right now is the time of grace, yes. But God's grace won't always be here. That's what we need to understand. Right now God's grace is here, but it won't always be here. And with that knowledge that it won't always be here, what type of people should we be? We should be people who surrender to the grace of God and live lives that are set apart for the Lord. You're not going to live a, whole, a perfect life. You're not going to live a flawless life. But living a holy life means that you live a life that knowing you're exclusive for God, knowing that you belong to God, knowing that my life is to give honor and glory to the Lord, that's a holy life, a life that's set apart for the Lord. And that's the type of life that God wants you to live. God's grace won't always be here, but it's here right now. If you're hearing this video, it's because God's grace is here right now. And glory to God. All we need to do is say, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I surrender to your grace. I surrender to your son, Jesus Christ. I believe in what he did for me on the cross. I believe that he resurrected on the third day. Lord, I ask you to forgive me for my sins. I ask you to save me, Lord. And your word says that if I ask for the Holy Spirit, you will give me the Holy Spirit. Father, in the name of Jesus, give me the Holy Spirit to teach me how to live this new life. In Jesus' name I pray and I believe this. Amen. And the Bible says if you make that prayer, that declaration of faith, believing it in the heart and confessing it with your mouth, God's holy word that does not lie says that you have the God-given right to be called a child of God. I hope and I pray that this video was a great blessing to your life. If it was, do me a favor. If you're not subscribed, press that subscribe button and turn on those notifications so that you can be alerted every time I post a brand new video. And also, if you want to show your appreciation for this channel, you can do so by a feature at the bottom of the screen called Super Thanks. Those are always greatly appreciated. Those are always a great blessing to my life. And if you want to show your appreciation on a monthly basis, you can do so by something called channel memberships. It's also going to be found at the bottom of the screen. Channel memberships gives you exclusive perks as a channel member, and it's also a way that you can show your appreciation on a monthly basis. Check it out if it's something you're interested in, but I can tell you it's going to be a great blessing for my life. I'll see you soon, Lord willing. Have a blessed day, and before you click off, make sure you watch one of these videos.